GP medic Kevin Cornwall, pictured here, and another unnamed UK national who manages a hotel in Kabul. They are believed to have been held by Taliban secret police since January. A Foreign Office spokesperson has said we are working hard to secure consular contact with British nationals detained in Afghanistan and we are supporting families. Let's speak to Scott Richards from the Presidium Network, who's helping the family of Mr. Cornwall and the unnamed man. Scott, thank you so much for talking to us. What is your understanding of what happened to those two men? We have a very clear understanding of the, the course of events that day, um, having spoken with multiple witnesses uh, to the events, including people in the room when the search has taken place. So what we believe uh, on a critical basis is that the GDI, which is the Taliban intelligence, reacted to a tip regarding a weapon stored in the, in the premises. Uh, that weapon was licensed, um, and we believe that during the course of the search that the license may have been separated from the weapon and this circumstance is ultimately the extension of a misunderstanding. What conditions are they being kept in and are they in good health? Um, to our knowledge and awareness, um, we do believe they are in good health and being well treated. Uh, we have no reason to believe they've been subject to sort of um, any, any negative treatment such as torture, um, and we're told that they are they're as good as can be expected in such circumstances. And have authorities been able to make contact with either of the men? No, not to this point. There has been no meaningful contact. Um, there's been no access by international monitoring agencies such as ICRC, which would normally be allowed to see people in uh, prisons or, prison or detainee conditions. Um, and there's been no other form of access to the individuals to date. And what were they doing in Afghanistan? Uh, the first individual, uh, Mr. Cornwell, is a uh, paramedic, uh, and he was liaising with organizations such as the United Nations, World Food Program, and UNICEF. Uh, the second individual, as you stated in your introduction, uh, was a manager of the facility where uh, Mr. Cornwell and many other expats stay. And what is your relationship to their family and to these men, Scott? Uh, we were looking into the position of detainees uh, in Afghanistan and allegations of people being held, uh, during which we discovered the presence of these two individuals. Uh, at that point, we then contacted the family to uh, assist them in terms of uh, speaking about the issues, but also with our long-standing relationships in Afghanistan and myself having previously had familiarity with the Taliban, uh, that we could assist in the negotiations to secure their release. What's the general security situation like in Afghanistan and specifically in Kabul? Um, that's a very complex question to answer. You would normally, if you take the Taliban line, they will say the security has improved. Obviously, we've witnessed a number of ISKP attacks. Uh, the more concerning part for foreigners working is that when we have a situation um, such as arbitrary detention and no right of legal access and no clarity of legal process, that certainly makes it much more complicated and risky for anyone looking to conduct humanitarian aid uh, at this difficult time for the country. Um, and that's really one of our key concerns, even above and beyond the, the lack of security, is the lack of transparency on process in these kinds of circumstances. So where does this go now, Scott? If the authorities have not been able to be in touch with these two men, what happens now? Uh, we're very hopeful that contact will be made. Um, we ourselves at Presidium um, have engaged in conversations uh, and in and around uh, with the Taliban to help facilitate and clear up this matter, as which we said we believe is a misunderstanding. Uh, and a misunderstanding that comes from not being familiar with the processes and practices of um, contractors operating in hostile zones. As is opposed to. Go ahead. Is is there something that makes you particularly hopeful if they've been held since January and nothing's happened since then? Um, hopeful in the sense that we've been able to, I think, express the situation, we've documented the situation, we've, created, we've collected the evidence uh, behind the surrounding circumstances um, that we believe adequately demonstrate that this is a misunderstanding and that given this is also the holy period of Ramadan, that compassion could be shown by the Islamic Emirate as a tradition um, of this period to pardon individuals. 
So do you think when it come, when Eid comes around, you could see a pardon? We would be hopeful and we would certainly request that the Taliban consider this um, situation in the context of their pursuit of you know, trying to bring in investment, trying to turn the country around, trying to um, you know, manage a situation that we have massive malnutrition. They fundamentally need aid. They need the World Food Program. And if those people are not able to operate safely um, or at risk of a legal system that is not wholly defined or understood, it's problematic for those people to be there. So we, we certainly hope they see the wisdom uh, that there is in looking at these situations carefully and thoughtfully. Are there a large number of foreign nationals in Afghanistan at the moment? Yes, there are. Um, and they come from many, many, many different countries. Um, there is a lot of momentum happening around um, Kabul at the moment. Uh, and it's a very, very broad and diverse sector. Uh, from a Western perspective, they'll mostly be in humanitarian sectors, though. And one would assume that if you go in, in the, as a humanitarian, you go in with an agency, you get the protection of that. Are there foreign nationals who go in without that protection? 